clap for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Merci beaucoup. Praise the Lord. Gloire à Dieu. I said praise the Lord. On the first day, we got the master key. And then since that time, we've been following on. And here we are today for the final scene. Let me tell you my secret. Many years ago, after I was saved, I wanted to preach to people. I didn't understand what it will take. And God showed me a revelation. I saw multitudes of people. And in that revelation, I was wearing my best clothes. At that time, we called the shirt double two. And I saw myself addressing crowds. I didn't understand. So I went on living my Christian life, reading my Bible, and praying to be a good believer, good Christian. All of a sudden, there were many other Christian activities I concentrated on. And I was glued to them. And nothing could take it from me. Or take them from me. But all of a sudden I saw that all those activities I was into. They were not, they were not um, reaching any soul. I enjoyed them. But it didn't make me profitable to the kingdom. And so all of a sudden, I found myself praying to God. Saying, oh Lord, I abandon all these good things, but not productive. And I concentrated on prayer and on some models of the evangelistic outreach. I had studied mathematics at the university. And I know how I studied to make a first class in mathematics in my first degree. So I came across one book Healing the Sick by T. L. Osborne. And I took that book as if I was in the mathematics class. I read it. I studied it. I marked it. If you see that first copy now of Healing the Sick by T. L. Osborne, it's almost torn apart. But after some years, I got a new copy. And I studied and I read. After some years, I got another copy. And then, but I had not started evangelizing or praying for the sick. Then some of the Bible study members in our Bible study then, They will see me at the university because I was still lecturing. They say, good morning, sir. I said, how did you know me? He said, I came to the Bible study. And I was very sick. And while you were preaching, just teaching Bible study, I got healed. I said, what? I said, tell me, tell me, tell me the truth. It's true. Another time, somebody came to the Sunday service. And um, you, I was praying. 
then I had myself saying what I didn't plan to say. I said that woman there or the evil spirit, I command the evil spirit, come out there. And the Lord opened the eyes of the woman. She had been having demonic spirit controlling her life for 18 years. And the Lord opened her eyes and the spirit came out. But when he came out, he stayed in one place. I didn't see anything. And I didn't plan to say what I was saying. I said, evil spirit, keep on moving, don't stay there. I said, go out of that place. The members of the church, they have been wondering, what's he, what's he saying today? But the Lord opened the eyes of that woman, and that spirit kept on moving until it went out. And they said, don't come back here. And then we were to have the first stadium crusade in Lagos. I just two cassettes of Maurice Cerullo. And for weeks before that crusade, I was listening to that to those two messages of Maurice Cerullo. I'd listen in the day, I listen in the night. I put the message there, and while I'm sleeping, it's still playing. I saturated my mind, my spirit with those two messages. And then the day came. Or oh, the crusade. Remember, all I had within me was the message I had heard. And the only way I can think is on the message I heard. So, we got there. I want to pray. I made the altar call. The people responded. I was not to pray for the sick in a way I had never, never done. While we were praying, we had not said the final amen. I was still praying and praying and praying. Oh Lord, heal the sick. At the middle of the prayer, a woman, a mother began to shout. What happened? His son, her son, a boy, did not have any bone in one leg, only flesh. And he, was, he had one good leg and one flesh rubber leg. He will use one stick and wind the flesh uh, that had no bone. He would uh, wind it around that uh, stick. In the middle of the prayer, he threw away the stick. God created bone in that leg. I was still praying. And the boy began to run and to jump on both legs with bones. When we finished prayer, that woman jumped, that woman cried, that woman laughed, that woman danced, did everything to say, God, am I for you? I tell you my story so that that story will be reproduced in your life. Don't think you cannot. You can. You will. Your own day has started today. Today, we're not going to preach, talk, talk, talk much. 
take all these messages you have heard. Like I took the book of Tielos Bond. And the messages, the cassettes of Maurice Cerullo. And I listened and listened and listened. And all that is said in those messages, they were transferred into my heart. Get the messages. These ministerial messages, professional messages. Listen to them. Don't worry whether you get anything in your own mind on them or not. Just listen. Because our children, when they are born, we don't send them to school when they are one month old. They stay with Papa and Mama. And Papa and Mama, they are talking together. And the child is just listening. He cannot say what they are saying. He cannot construct the sentences like they are constructing. But the child keeps on listening to Papa and Mama. Before the child goes to school, he's already speaking the language fluently. Because he has been listening and listening and listening. Listen and you will learn. Today, a new day is coming on you. What you found impossible in the past will become possible. Let, let us pray. Father, I thank you for all our brothers, all our sisters, all our ministers, all our professionals. You brought them here for a purpose. That purpose will be fulfilled. Make champions out of your people here. Raise giants of, of your people here. Let the enemy clear away from their side in Jesus' name. Throw my son there, throw my daughter there, begin to do the impossible in their ministries. Open their hearts to receive. Open their eyes to see. They will go to the length and breadth of this country, neighboring countries, other countries, to manifest the power of God in their lives in Jesus' name. Do it, Lord. Be with them. Walk with them. Evangelize through them. Confirm your miracle upon every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Today we're coming to the final message of the series that we are dealing with revival in the last days. The long awaited revival. And praise the Lord, it's happening in our time. Today, I'm talking to you on the promised revival outpouring in these last days. We're looking at Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. 
I want you to look at that word, pour out, pour out. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. You go to a doctor and he gives you um, a bottle of medicinal liquid. And he says, this bottle, what you will do? You will take a small bottle and you will pour out from this big bottle into that small bottle. And because it's small, you will be able to get drops out of that bottle. And your eyesight that is going down, you will put drops on those eyes. You cannot pour it from the big bottle to your eye. That's why you will put it in this small bottle. And then you put the drops there. But he says, wait. That small bottle contained another liquid before. So before you pour into that small bottle, you will wash the bottle thoroughly. After you've washed it thoroughly, you will cleanse it thoroughly. So that, so that no trace of what is in that was in that bottle before will remain before you pour. Wash the bottle. Cleanse the bottle before you poured in. That's what Jesus did for the disciples. You are like this, you are like that, but now you are washed. Salvation makes us washed. And then before he left, he said, you are washed, but I need to cleanse you. And he cleansed them. He sanctified them. He said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. And he said, when they are washed and cleansed, they all be one. And on the day of Pentecost, when they were one in one accord, they had been washed, washed from their sin. They had been cleansed, cleansed from their pride. You used to say, who is the greatest among us? I want to sit on this side, I want to sit on that side. They had been washed, they had been cleansed. No argument again, no pride again. And then when they were all seated in one accord on the day of Pentecost, a great sound came from heaven. And fire like the tongues of fire came upon them. The Spirit of God was poured into their little bottle. The big bottle is in heaven. The Holy Spirit is under the control of the Heavenly Father. And he says, I'll pour my spirit upon little flesh, little flesh, all flesh, little, little bottles all over the earth. And as he wants to pour the spirit upon us, he wants us to be washed. No private sinning anymore. No habitual sinning anymore. All the defilement of our lives saves us and he washes us from them. And then he says, washing is one thing, cleansing is another thing. Cleanse me. Wash me. Purge me. Purify me. 
he washes us our hearts and he cleanses our hearts he sanctifies us and then the promise to pour out his spirit upon us now takes place we're looking at the promised revival outpouring in these last days look at verse 39 in verse 39 for the promises unto you the doctor is holding the big bottle and he's saying the liquid here that will take away your blindness your dimness and will give you bright 2020 vision is in this big bottle Go wash your little bottle. Go cleanse your little bottle. Be washed and be cleansed. I'll pour my spirit upon you. In these last days, look at verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are far, far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Three things we're looking at in the message today. The word and the spirit in his saints. Number two, the walking of the spirit through his servants. Number three, our willingness and zeal by the Spirit. Look at number one. The word and the Spirit in His servants. The Spirit of God walks with the Scriptures from God. The Spirit of God works with the Scriptures from God. <clears throat> That's why we should have the internalizing of the Word with the Spirit. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and its glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up his standard against him. Then in verse 20, it says, And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and shall come unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. Then in verse 21, it says, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. Look at this, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth. My spirit and my word, the word of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord walking together if, if the word is not there the spirit does not know what instrument what weapon you have uh, to work you have the word you have the spirit remember you must wash your little bottle and cleanse your little bottle 
the words, the words you have been hearing, the words you have been speaking, words of unbelief and words of doubt and words of deception, all those words must wash them out, cleanse them out, and then the words of the eternal will be brought in. You must cleanse your bottle all the words of tradition and the words of the nation and the words of human beings and the words that will not develop faith in you faith coming by hearing hearing by the word of the lord all the other kinds of word must be washed out must be cleansed out before the word that develops faith will take root in your life You must wash, wash that little bottle of all the other words you have been used to. And then the word of the Lord alone will take effect and be mighty and powerful in your life, in your ministry. The word that will forget the word of the past. The word that will take away the words of society, the words of sinfulness, and the words of Satan out of your life, and everything is washed, your bottle, everything is cleansed, your bottle, and the word of the Lord takes supremacy in your heart and in your life. Now the spirit, the spirit, it says, my words and my spirit, which I put inside you. The spirit controlled actions must, if it's the evil spirit, it must get out of you. I'm a believer. Since I'm a believer, how can the action of the devil, action of Satan, influence of Satan, and the control of Satan be in my life? You remember Peter? Jesus had spoken. He too had spoken. And the Lord had said, Flesh and blood has not revealed that of you but my Father who is in heaven. And so Jesus began to reveal the might of the Father. And, sat and uh, Satan now came to influence Peter. And he said, That shall not be. What did Jesus say? Get thee behind me, Satan. He yielded to the influence and the control of Satan. Now, we must wash that bottle. We must cleanse that bottle. And the cleansing and the washing of the bottle means every influence of an evil spirit, every influence of a traditional spirit, every influence of a denominational spirit every influence of the human spirit everything must go you wash the bottle you cleanse the bottle and the word of the lord will take supremacy and the spirit of the lord will take the overcoming overwhelming power in your life He says, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit, not another spirit, my spirit that is upon them and my words which I have put in their mouth. You know, if you come to the presence of the Lord, and you stay in the presence of the Lord and you yield and surrender submit to the Lord like he put his word in the mouth of Moses and he said my word is in your mouth 
I've sent you to Pharaoh. Take that word. Go with that word and tell Pharaoh, this is my word. Eventually, he'll let Israel go. Jeremiah, the word in his mouth. And that is what he took with him, the word in his mouth. And then he was able to speak to the nation and do the will of God and fulfill the calling of God upon his life. His word in your mouth. His word in your heart. His word in your mind. His word in your memory. That whenever you speak the word that the Lord has put there and you have received the word, internalize the word, and you live by the word, it gives you the power and the manifestation of the outpouring in your life. And it says, it shall not depart out of your mouth. And it said, no, out of the mouth of thy seed. No, out of the mouth of thy seed, because says the Lord from henceforth and forever. Remember, remember it's the word and the spirit that work together. If you reject the word, the spirit cannot work. If you forget the word, the spirit cannot work. If you concentrate on your own traditional past words, the spirit that wants to do something new in your life and through your life cannot work. The word and the spirit. Uh, look at Proverbs chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 23. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Turn you at my correction. Turn you at my rebuke. What's the Lord saying there? He has told us, wash your bottle, cleanse your bottle. Before you pour in this efficacious medicinal liquid, Do that first. There are people that put your spirit on me. Put your spirit on me. Baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Let me have power. Let me have anointing. Wash the bottle. Cleanse the bottle. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. Turn you at my reproof first. Correct that traditional thing you're used to. Correct that habitual thing you're used to. Turn. Repent. Turn around. Let a new life be demonstrated in you. Turn you at my correction and then after that behold i will pour out my spirit upon you and look at this i will make known my words unto you the spirit and the word the word and the spirit it says i'll Make my words known unto you, and I will pour my spirit unto you. Once again, the spirit of the Lord walks along with the scriptures from the Lord. Look at verse 33. 
but whoso hackness unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. John chapter 3 verse 34. In John chapter 3 verse 34, for who he whom God has said speaketh the words of God. The words of God. Not the words of man. Not the words of the Pharisees. Not the words of the Sadducees. Not the words of the traditional religious people. He whom God has said speaketh the words of God. Uh, look at the next thing there. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The words of God in him and the Spirit of God in him. And the totality, the entirety of the Word of God. He didn't say, I accept this, I don't accept that. I believe in healing, I don't believe in holiness. I believe in salvation, I don't believe in sanctification. The Lord believed and accepted the totality of the Word of God. And then the Father gave him the Spirit immeasurable, without measure. He wants us to have the word and have the spirit. The word in fullness and the spirit in fullness. The spirit of God walks with the scriptures from God. In John chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 63. It is the spirit that quickness. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words and the spirit. The spirit and the word. First Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 4. In First Corinthians chapter two, verse four, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. And then in verse five. He said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, the words of men, but in the power of God, the Spirit of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Look at verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able to quench all the furry darts of the wicked. The shield of faith. That will be able to quench and stop and destroy all the furry darts of the wicked one. And that faith comes by hearing the word of God. Your heart receives the word of God. Your heart embraces the word of God. Your heart believes the word of God. Your heart internalizes the word of God. Your heart takes that word from God and it makes it your personal word. And it is the presence of the word in you 
that brings you the faith that will quench and destroy all the furry darts of the evil one. Look, look at verse 17. In verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Which, which is the word of God. The sword of the Spirit. In the Roman world in those days, they used to go to their stadium. And all the spectators will be there. Then there will be two people. One having his sword. The other one having his sword. And they begin to fight with their swords together. And they develop themselves so much. That they were able to present a great fight with the swords before the audience. If one had a wooden sword and the other one had an iron sword, you can tell what will happen to the one that has a wooden sword. As we fight the fight of faith, as we go into the field, we have the spirit. But the spirit needs a sword to walk with. And if we move around and we're fighting the fight of faith, we have the spirit, we don't have the sword of the spirit. How, where do we land? It says, and take the sword of the spirit. That sword of the spirit is the word of God. When the word is as mighty in you as the spirit is mightily present in you, you will defeat every enemy. Hey, look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. It tells us and the word of God is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word and the spirit. The word and the spirit in his saints. In his saints. The father. The son. And they are equal. And the spirit. And they are equal. The father is holy. The son is holy. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit. We must become saints. Not saints in a statue that is raised up, that cannot move, that cannot talk, that cannot evangelize, that cannot do anything. A saint statue. A living saint. A washed saint. A clean saint, a holy saint, that you come to the Lord, He washes you whiter than snow. Your mind, your heart, your soul, your thoughts, your personality, you are washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And you become a living saint. You become a walking saint. You become a lifeless saint. The saint, the one that is washed and cleansed, the word and the spirit will come into him and God will use you to do wonders in Jesus' name.
Number two now. Number two is the walking of the Spirit through His servants. We work. But we need instruments to work. The student learns. He wants to write an exam. Whatever he knows, whatever is God, he needs a pen to write it down for the examiner. The farmer is competent. He knows the soil. He has the seed. He wants to reap a great harvest. But the farmer must use the instrument to plow and to sow. The driver knows how to drive. He has a license. The car is there. And the car is in good condition. He must get into the car and put action to his intention. So that he'll be able to use what he has with the instrument he has and take you to the destination you are going. The servants of the Lord are called. The servants of the Lord are put in place to do his will. The Spirit must work with him. If you just go out, I have experience. You go out, I have power. And the Spirit abandons you to your pride. They cannot work. But the Spirit comes to you. You are in cooperation with the Spirit of God. He speaks and you listen. And you focus on Him and Him alone. And there is no distraction of one man, the distraction from a woman, the distraction from anything around you. And you focus on the Spirit. That Spirit will work mightily in you. The working of the Spirit through his servants. Now, his servants. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot dance to two different tunes at the same time. You cannot be under the control of God and under the control of a man or of a woman at the same time. If the Lord is going to work with us, there must be one central control. There must be one final control. There must be one indisputable control. That's what the servants of the Lord. And nobody is tying any rope on your feet. That you are trying to obey man, obey God at the same time. You must be his servant. And it is the people who are totally, completely, entirely, without any rival, yielding unto God, that the people that the Spirit of God will walk with. The walking of the Spirit through his servants. Now, you cannot be the servant of man without your will. Even, the, even to be the servant of God, you have to agree. You have to be under his will. You cannot say so and so hindered me, so I couldn't say what I wanted to say. Are we so weak as servants of God that we cannot say what God wants us to say because of him, because of her? 
servants of God are under the control of God. The servants of God are under the control of the Spirit of God. In our ministries, if we're going to succeed, you never, never, never allow a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, an entity to stand between you and the Almighty God. Then the Spirit of God will walk through you. Amen. Amen. Look at Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 20 there. It says, And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking, walking, walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. All those all those people that were converted on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 souls in one day. The Lord walking with them. All those people that were healed. How many signs and wonders were wrought from the hands of the apostles. The Lord walking with them. And when it when he took the handkerchief uh, from Paul's body and laid it on the people having an evil spirit, and the evil spirit came out of that of those people, the Lord walking with them. They surrendered unto the Lord. They fully submitted unto the Lord. And the Lord walked with them. It's still the same today. As you surrender to the Lord, and your old will is thrown away, and you come under the total irrevocable will of the Almighty God. And your will is in the will of God. Your will is under the will of God. Your will is in line with the will of God. Your will is fully, completely, entirely submissive unto the will of the Heavenly Father. It's that those wheels are together and the wheels are going the same direction. Not that the wheels of your car, they're going, they're pointing different direction. Not that the wheel of your mind and the wheel of your habit, they're going in different direction from that of God. It is when your will is aligned with the will of God, that is the time the Lord walking with them and confirming their word were signs following. You know, man, from Adam and Eve, how their will went their own way and they stubbornly continued in their self will. And then the Lord cannot walk on them. But when we return to the Lord and we wash our will from the old will and we cleanse our will from the old will and now our mind, our desire, our will, our submission Everything is totally under the control of the Spirit of God. That's when the Lord will say, that's peculiar. All other people, they go through their own self-will. All other people, they go through their own personal stubborn will against the will of the Lord. 
but, but this one look at him look at her washed cleansed saved sanctified and the human will is nailed to the cross of calvary and the will is totally submissive to the will of the god of heaven it is then that God will walk with them. And as we go to walk with the Lord, if somebody says, Oh God, um, I hear what you say, I know what you want, but let me follow my will, my stubborn will. God will say, Okay, go on your own. It is the submission of a will to the will of God, of a mind to the mind of Christ. It is the submission that we say, Lord, have your way and not my way. I'm not trying to control, and then God trying to control. I say, give me a chance. Now, God, remove your hand. Let me control. No, God will not walk with such puny men and puny women that cannot see that God is overall and that he controls everything. But when we're submissive to the will of God, and we say like Jesus, not my will, but thine be done. It is then the Spirit of God will walk with us. He'll confirm our word, he'll confirm our preaching, he'll confirm our teaching with signs, supernatural signs following. Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time, any time, any time, lest at any time we should let them sleep. <laughs> He says everything we have heard. The word of his promise. The word of his power. The word of prophecy. The word of his prediction. And the word that comes personally to us from his word, go and I will go with you. It's when we will not that let that word sleep. The word of repentance. We have heard we must turn away from everything and anything that's against the word and the will of God. When we get, give heed to the word of repentance, that's when you'll walk with us. The word of correction. As the disciples were asking, who is greater? Who is number one? Who is going to lead the others? And Jesus said, they do that in the world. It shall not be so among you. When we listen to his word of correction, that shall not be so among you. That lifestyle shall not be so among you. That careless living shall not be so among you. He says, we, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. The word of his promise, tarry in Jerusalem, until the power comes upon you. It's when we listen to that word. And we ought to give the more honesty to the things which you have heard. The word of his promise. 
the word of the great commission go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and he says behold i am with you until the end of the world go touch the life of that neighbor go have compassion on them and tell them what the lord has done for you when we listen to that word of commission therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time careless time lest at any time habitual time lest at any time the time of a carefree attitude lest at any time we should let them sleep look at verse 2 for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward in verse 3 it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him look at, look at verse 4 that's where we're going god also bearing them witness both were signs and wonders and were diverse miracles and gifts of the holy ghost according to his own will that's how he works with us when we do not let the words we have heard sleep away from us and we're totally submissive and giving to that word he has given to us God also bearing them witness with signs and wonders I pray from henceforth from today that word will work with you he has said through you he will cast out devils through you he will save souls upon this rock I build my church he will use you to build the church and what you build for his glory what he cooperates with you to build nothing will pull it down no one will pull it down and nobody will be able to pull you down higher higher like we told like we told our young people come up higher come up higher if you come high but was still reachable by the courts of men if you come high but was still reachable by the devices of women you are not high enough and they can still pull you down go up go up go up because the eagles fly high that's why the hunters cannot shoot them down if you're at a low level any hunter man any hunter woman can shut you down can shoot you down but when you go so high you're waiting on the lord you're depending upon the lord are you rising higher and higher and higher? I see you there. 
I said, I see you there. No one will be able to pull you down in Jesus' name. We submit to the word of the Lord. And we submit to the spirit of the Lord. And you are so high. And from the high mountain, you are ministering to the needs of the people. Power will walk through you. And the opportunity you have at your own time will not pass you by. The walking of the Spirit through His servants. Number three now. We're looking at the willingness and the zeal by the Spirit. The willingness of the people that are filled with the Spirit of God. And then you are walking in the vineyard of the Lord. On the field of evangelism, in the ministry of edification, and then uh, the willingness is always there. Go talk to Ahab. Ahab. Lord, I am tired now. Send another person. The people who always retreat from assignment, they never make any mark in their generation. Go talk to Jezebel there. Lord, you know the history of Jezebel? Killed that one. Paralyzed that one. Made that other one dump, he cannot speak anymore. Finished other minister. Are you ascending me? <laughs> oh Lord, I'm sorry. Send another person. If it's not you, who will do it? When you are not willing, because he has sent you to Pharaoh. When you are not willing, because he has sent you to Nebuchadnezzar. When you are not willing, because you think there's a lion in the way. When you are not willing, because you say no other prophet has stood before Jezebel, how can I do that? When you are not willing, he cannot walk with you. But when you say, save me, Lord, and I shall be saved. Heal me, Lord, and I shall be healed. Send me, Lord, and I will go. You will go. You know, I was invited somewhere. And God was so good. He didn't tell me what I will meet there when I get there. And you know, when you are ignorant, you're happy. When you don't know who will be there to meet you on the way, you're happy. So I didn't know. And I, I went in my simplicity. And in my submission. And we got to that village. Where we're going to evangelize. But during the day before the evening meeting, I'm talking about some years ago, not now when, you know, everywhere I go now, because of, you know, different kinds of people that might push me or pull me or whatever, and I'm getting older, I don't have the strength of uh, the teenagers that they push me, I push them. Now they can push me, so people will not allow them to push me, so they surround me. But at that time, thank God, I was alone. I was a happy young man. I wasn't even married at that time. Just anywhere I want to go, I just go. When I want to come back for my Monday Bible study, I go back to Lagos. Free. You'll be free. 
And so we got to this village. Wanted to evangelize that house. And we saw a woman dancing around a pot. And the person who went with me said, let's preach to her. I said, no, no, no. Let her finish. And so she finished her going around the pot. And I said, madam, what are you doing? I knew, but I acted, you know, I, I told you I was a young man at that time. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm worshipping my God. I said, this is your God? And she had a boy totally paralyzed sitting down there watching the mother dance around the porch. I said, see what your God has done to your child. Paralyzed. Cannot stand up. Cannot do anything. So I said, if you come to my God, this child will rise up and walk. He said, no, no, no. I said, take that idol. Smash it on the ground. I'll pay for the child. I said, no. What if you pray for my child and my child does not get up and then I've already smashed my idol? Nothing remains. And I told her, I am a teacher. My students do not dictate to me what to teach. You are my student today. And I tell you, take that pot, smash it on the ground. And the woman did that. And I didn't... I wasn't speaking their language. And there was no interpreter to interpret my prayer in a dynamic way. And the boy, I think uh, he was less than 10 years of age. He didn't understand all the command I was giving in prayer. And I said, boy, in the name of Jesus, I didn't touch him. I didn't pull him up. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the boy looked up at me like this. And he got up. I said, walk. And he started walking. After that, I spoke to the woman. And said, if your God has done this, I abandon idol, I'm going to serve the Lord. <laughs> and we kept on. I said, when is your husband coming back? He said, he went to the farm. He will soon come back. I said, well, wait. And then we kept on talking to the woman, teaching her on discipleship teaching her on how to follow the Lord and then the husband came back remember I don't I wasn't speaking like I'm speaking now my grammar English has improved and my way of talking to people has improved a little but at that time single man not married not having any woman to say, say it this way. Don't say it that way. Totally single. And so the man came. And I said, man, look at your boy. The Lord has sealed your boy. And your boy has come to the kingdom of God. And then I said, look at your wife. She's come into the kingdom of God. Hear what I said. Remember, my language was not polished at that time. 
I said, you are the only black leg and scapegoat in this family now. Uh, the scapegoat that has sorrow pill the neck and they are taking him to be killed. I said you are the only goat in the house now. They are converted. And you know, the Lord did not mind my language. I told you yesterday that Satan doesn't understand good English or good French. And the Lord doesn't penalize you for the grammar you don't know. All he needs is the word and the spirit inside you. And the man said, I will not be a scapegoat. Tell me what to do. I told him about Jesus. He surrendered. He was born again. The woman born again. The boy born again and killed. And the man now born again. What the Lord has given me, I give you. The word and the spirit. And the freedom. To do what the Lord has called you to do. And not to be under any control of any other spirit. And you say, Lord, here I am. I have your word. I have your spirit. And I go in the power of the word, in the power of the spirit. Everywhere you go, the Lord will walk with you. You will not fail. I see Peter and John. And they are running in to the place where the women said, we have not found his body. And Peter was running ahead. And then John, still coming from behind, he ran past him. He saw that, uh, he saw that empty place. Maybe I've started before you. And see me now the way I walk and the way I run. Come on, run past me here. Let's go say possible. Run. 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 Stand up and start running. Stand up and start running. You will run. You will walk. What have I done? You will do more than I have done. Get up and say, Lord, I come. Your word in me, your spirit in me, your power in me. Don't just trot or walk, run. Come now, tell the Lord. Whether you are married or you are not married. Forget about that. Even those who are not married, you'll be stronger. You'll be freer. And you should look unto the Lord alone. And say, Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Don't let marriage stop you. Don't let a woman stop you. Don't let any man stop you. Don't let anybody's private agenda stop you. Arise and walk. Arise and move that mountain. Arise and do what the Lord has called you to do. Walk. Walk for the Lord. And move for the Lord. And run for the Lord. He has set a race before you. And he has said, this is what you do. And with all your heart. And with all your soul. 
I will tell your mind. You say what the Lord has put in your mouth to say. Work for the Lord. And surrender your heart and surrender everything before the Lord. Remember, you must be free. If the tie rope on your head, on your on your legs, if they try to muscle your mouth, if they try to stop you, if you are stoppable. The word of God has not filled your heart. If you are stoppable, the spirit of God has not filled your heart. Arise and walk for the Lord. Arise and run for the Lord. Arise and do what he has called you to do. Free. 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 That nothing holds you back. Nothing holds you down. Tell the Lord, here I am. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my precious Savior, I surrender all. Give your heart fully to him. Your willingness fully to him. And give all your mind and all your submission completely to him. He will walk with you. He will walk through you. If you drop all the sick that will pull you down or pull you back. If you center your affection and your love on him, on him alone. If you say, Lord, who do I know on earth? Who do I know in heaven? Who do I know in the country? Who do I know around me? That will slow me down. That will pull me down. That will do anything that shouldn't, that will not allow me to do all that I need to do. What is she? What is she? Who are they? Who is he? You caught all the rope that ties you down. And you say, Lord, I am ready. Ready to take my flight. Ready to walk by faith. Ready with the arms of grace and faith. Ready to go and to do. Ready to accomplish everything you call me to accomplish. I am willing. I am ready. In the day of your power, in these days of revival, in these days of working for the Lord, I am willing. I am willing. I am willing. I am ready. And the Lord will walk with you. The word in your mouth. The spirit in your life. Full of the word. And full of the spirit. And you do the work of the Lord. Surrender unto him. Surrender unto him. Fully. Without reservation. Without any rival. And without any fear. He has not given you the spirit of fear. The spirit of timidity. He gives you the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. Free. Free. Are you free? 
If you are afraid of anything, you are not free. If you are afraid of a man, you are not free. If you are afraid of a woman, you are not free. If you are afraid of Jezebel, she brought that one down. She brought that one down. She brought that one down. And you are afraid of her, she will bring you down. You are not free. If you are afraid of Ahab, he brought that one down. He destroyed the very stamina and the power of those other prophets. If you are afraid of them, you are not free. Lord, here I am. The power that makes the preacher free. Give it to me. The power that makes the servant of the Lord free. Give it to me. The power that makes a man and woman to do the will of God without modifying that will and without carefully doctoring that will. Give that spirit to me. Living with power. Walking with power. Running with power. Your day has now come. Your day has now come. No man will stop you. No woman will stop you. No Jezebel will stop you. No Ahab will stop you. Where are they? They are down.
Amen. The Lord has answered your prayer. Everything you spoke about in your prayer. And you surrender yourself. Use me. It will go beyond your prayer. Remember my story? Make the story your own. Where are you? Father, in Jesus' name. Every brother, every sister here. Every servant of God here. The man, the woman. Fill their heart with your word in Jesus' name. Any word that will not work wonders, take away from their mouth. Amen. Any word that will take them back to the bad old days of no power, no strength, no anointing, take that unprofitable word away. Every spirit that had not given abundant life and success and power, take that spirit away in Jesus' name. Feel every heart of the word of power. Let your word of prophecy be fulfilled in every life. The word that will produce wonders in every life. Give everyone the wonder of your word. Every brother, every sister. You turn this way wonders. You turn that way wonders. You carry the wonders of God with you. Everywhere you go in Jesus' name. Your bottle, your heart, your soul be totally washed and entirely clean. The Spirit of God is poured upon your life. You will act extraordinary. You will speak extraordinary. You will accomplish extra the extraordinary. Your life, your interaction, your touching other people, your walking everywhere, henceforth will have the exploits. No fear in your heart. No doubt in your heart. And there is no unbelief in your heart. You'll be, you will be like that little stone in the hand of the son of David. And where David sent that stone, every Goliath came down. Are that little stone. You are that instrument. You are that weapon in the hand of Jesus. 
through you and with you will bring down every Goliath in your way. Arise, go, walk, great things will happen through you. The Lord will be walking with you every day. The same story you have heard from me, that story is transferred into your life. Stand, don't sit. Go, don't draw back. Preach, don't keep quiet. Power goes with you everywhere. It is done. It is done. In your life. In your ministry. In your calling. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Pouvou, amen. Pour moi, amen. Pour nous tous, amen.